So welcome to Sheffield. It has been the most fantastic hot summer's day and I love British cities when the sun comes out. People go absolutely crazy. Um, so I was walking down to this square a bit earlier in order to meet up with Lee and Maxi and also Damon Hope. Now Damon is our tour photographer and blogger and he deserves a special mention on this diary because it's Damon who shoots the crowd scenes at the beginning of almost all of my video reports. So um so yeah, special thanks to Damon. So I was walking down to down here to meet those guys and I noticed a plaque on the wall which caught my interest. So continuing on the theme that I started in Brixton, I want to look at a uh, probably by most people forgotten local hero. This guy is called Samuel Holbury and apparently he was the leader of the Sheffield Chartists. So who were the Chartists? Well, back in Holbury's time, you could only vote if you were rich. There was absolutely no voice whatsoever for ordinary working people. The Chartists wanted to change that. They had a charter which demanded votes for all men. It was just men, but what now seems like a backwards demand because of the omission of women at that time was actually a huge step forward for democracy. The Chartists started in London and officially arrived in Sheffield in December 1837 with the founding of the Sheffield Working Men's Association. This is what was said at that founding meeting. The working classes of this kingdom produce the wealth which is at the disposal of the capitalists and yet they are oppressed by unjust and unequal laws and injured by the degrading forms and customs of the existing system of society. Within a couple of years, the Chartists were massively popular. They were having significant demonstrations and they were having meetings on almost a daily basis. The government, of course, banned them. The Chartists decided to ignore the ban and called for a general strike on August the 12th, 1839. The general strike was a massive success, bringing together thousands of workers and their families in Paradise Square in the centre of Sheffield. At least 7,000 people paraded through the town with banners and flags. But as evening started to wear on and the numbers started to dwindle, the authorities moved in, arresting about 70 of the Chartists. The events of August the 12th acted as a catalyst and by the beginning of September the Chartists had 700 new recruits. Samuel Holbury had now become their leader and he started to plan an armed insurrection. They planned to take the town hall in Sheffield and Tontine Inn opposite and they would stop the post as a sign to Chartists in Barnsley and in Nottingham of their success. But the plot was betrayed. Holbury was arrested and ended up dying in York Prison two years later. This was the statement read out at Holbury's funeral. Our task is not to weep, our task is to act, to labour with heart and soul for the destruction of the horrible system under which Holbury has perished. Tyrants have in all ages and in all countries striven by persecution to crush liberty and by torture, chains and death to prevent the assertion of the rights of man. It would appear that our haughty rulers are bent on following the same and seeking by the same means to arrest the progress of democracy. We bid them defiance. What this tells us today is that ordinary people have always had to struggle for their rights. Those rights have never been freely given by people with power in society. Nowadays, of course, the vast majority of men and women in Britain do have the vote. But because of the influence of big business on government, because of the power of media moguls, like we were talking about when we were back in Milan, because you don't get to vote for the vast majority of people who actually have power over your day-to-day -day lives, because there's such economic disparity in a society where money means power, for all these reasons, we have to say that the struggle for real democracy still has a long way to go.